This video is the second episode of Martin setup for the CNC router. Please check the previous link if you want full Martin setup content. The following video will focus on the spindle setup. Hi, welcome to Slow Engineering. I'm David. In the previous video, Martin already mapped the pin for CNC machines. Pin PP5 and pin PP6 are assigned to the spindle PWM control and enable pins. So, I found a motor driver with these functions and started editing the configuration file on Marlin. Most of the settings of CNC machines are in the configuration advanced.h file. By a section with spindle and laser control, and I'll common the spindle features to enable the spindle function. Then, the first one needs to check its spindle laser active state. This can be changed when the action is opposite. Next, the spindle laser use PWN enables PWN to control the spindle. Lastly, roll down and find the cutter power unit. For the first time, set the control unit in PWN255. Here are the settings for the CNC spindle. Don't forget to check the number M106 fans number before building the firmware. Using Primbron to test the spindle. Command M3S255 to fully speed the spindle and M5 to disable the spindle. The spindle should work with these commands. After several testing, I found out things are not that simple. First, the red driver board's durability is not well. I broke two pieces in serial test runs. I turned to get two types of cheap control boards to replace the red one. After testing the encoder's voltage, only the square one can substitute for the original one with its 0 to 5 volt control. This new driver doesn't need an enable pin to enable the motor, which means the pin is useless. Second, even though the mainboard provides 5 volt, the voltage on the negative is not the same as the P ground. The current only flows to P ground when the MOSFET gate opens. And there is no flow to perform voltage difference when the gate closed. Once the gate opens, the current runs from 5V through the MOSFET to the P ground. The frequency of opening and closing the gate becomes the PWN signals on voltage. On the other hand, the original pin ground for the encoder on the motor driver board shares the same voltage level as P ground. As a result, the negative on the main board cannot directly plug into the pin ground on the driver board. I came up with a solution to isolate two PWN signals with an optical isolation amplifier, the 790A. By connecting the mainboard PWN signals on one side and the driver boards on the other side, the PWN signal can be passed to the driver boards without being in the same circuit. Follow the pin definition to wire the capacitors and the corresponding pins. The output voltage on this isolation amplifier is 2.5 volt. To amplify the voltage, introducing a boost module is needed. Then, the final output is wired directly to the driver. With these modifications, two boards are finally working with each other. After the wiring, head back to Pinrun to test the spindle. Place the reflection stickers on the plane on the coolant nut. This reflectable stickers is for the speedometer to get RPM values relative to the PWN signal. Changing different PWM values with the speedometer to measure the corresponding spindle speed. After sampling several values, calculate the functions and estimate the relation between PWM and RPM. The result I got doesn't have apparent changes when the PWM values are lower than 31. So I neglected the lower parts of the PWM signals and calculate the functions by linear regression. Later, use the function to get the maximum spindle speed for configuration. With the corresponding values, add to the configuration advanced.h file to modify the settings. Now the cutter power unit can be changed into RPM for easy use. At the lower part, the M3 M4 power equations fill the minimum and maximum speed of the spindle. 
The speed power intercept is based on the power percentage when the spindle starts to spin. Here the spindle spin with M3, S1 and the PW unit, so the intercept value should be zero. The last one is the default speed. Like the M3 command without any value, the spindle will spin at this speed. After modifying these values, build the modern firmware again and refresh it to the mainboard. Here are some changes and modern configurations for the spindle. I hope you get something. Like share this video and subscribe to this channel if you want to see more relative contents in the future. Or consider becoming a Patreon member to support more projects. I also start an online shop to help you get custom 3D printing. Thank you for watching and see you next time.